Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the difference between slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibres. Now, I've already made videos on muscle structure and how muscle actually contracts via the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction. So this is really like the third and final part to that trio of videos if you like. We'll look at the difference between what we mean by slow twitch and fast twitch fibres. Now let's just think about the word fibre. So this, this is the diagram that I used in those particular videos. And I said that the muscle fibre is essentially the myofibril. So we started off at the top with a full skeletal muscle sort of diagram. And we could see that we had um, muscle fascicles if you like, surrounded by this perimyceum. And then if we zoom in, if you like, we can see we've got the perimyceum around the outside and these muscle fascicles with an outer layer of endomyceum, this sort of connective tissue. We see this muscle fascicle is divided up into individual muscle fibres. And then we on the bottom we sort of zoom in on one of those fibers and we can see the sarcolemma which is like the cell membrane we've got the actin and myosin filaments inside so that's just a quick overview of what what we're looking at in this now skeletal muscle is made up of really two types of these kind of muscle fibers slow twitch and fast twitch and different mus muscles have different proportions of slow and fast twitch fibers and they have different properties so what we're going to do is we're going to look at slow first. We'll look at the slow twitch fibres first. Now those slow twitch fibres, they contract slowly and so can work for a long time without getting tired. So we're just going to put the bare um, minimal information here. So these are the ones that contract slowly and last for a long time. So clearly that would make them good for things like endurance activities, like long distance running and maintaining posture. So in fact, we actually have high proportions of these slow twitch muscle fibers in muscles that you use for posture, like the ones in the back and your calves. Now, if we were to draw this myofibril, because I know at the bottom we've got this diagram of the myofibril here, but if we were to, to just draw a sort of very rough cross section let's say. So let's say here's the end of this myofibril. We've got some blood vessels here so I'll just draw the blood vessels in red there. Now what we find is that we have these sort of ends of the actin and myosin filaments and we have an couple of these in I think blue we have mitochondria now mitochondria is the site of aerobic respiration and we have these near to the outside and I'll colour in green just to make the difference in fact I'll, I'll use a darker red I think for this and then I'll explain why in a moment. We have, so I'm just doing a diagrammatic representation of a slow twitch fibre and then I'm going to go on to explain what all these parts are. So we've said when we find these slow twitch fibres, the key thing to remember is that energy is released slowly through aerobic respiration in these slow twitch fibres. So energy is released slowly and that's aerobically so that means with oxygen and that's why I've put a load of the mitochondria there because these slow twitch fibers have lots of mitochondria and blood vessels to supply the muscles with oxygen those mitochondria that I've drawn in in blue so I'll put here label that mitochondria. The mitochondria are mainly found actually near to the edge of these muscle fibres. Now 
the reason why you find lots of mitochondria around the edge is to minimise the diffusion path. Apologies, diffusion pathway for oxygen from the blood vessels to the mitochondria. So you want a short diffusion pathway for oxygen to go from the blood vessel to the mitochondria for aerobic respiration. So that's why you have loads of them close to the surface, close to the blood vessel. So in this slow twitch muscle fibre, you get energy really slowly, aerobically, lots of blood vessels, lots of mitochondria on the outside, and that lasts, they last for a long time. Now, slow twitch muscle fibres are also rich in what's called myoglobin, and that's what this red dot that I'm trying to draw was there. So you might have heard of haemoglobin that carries oxygen in red blood cells. We have another type of haemoglobin called myoglobin. Now myoglobin is a red protein, red coloured protein, that's designed to store oxygen. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but it stores oxygen. And that's why we have lots of them there. So the key thing to remember, slow twitch fibre, lots of blood vessels, lots of mitochondria, aerobic respiration to release energy slowly. These fibres contract slowly and they're therefore good for endurance activities. So let's look at the other type of muscle fibre, the fast twitch, because they're quite notably different. So I'm going to put down here fast twitch and we'll talk about those. Now as you might guess, it's kind of the opposite to the slow twitch fibres. These fast twitch muscle fibres contract very, very quickly. So that's something to first of all note, that these contract quickly, as the name implies. Now because they contract very quickly, they also tire very quickly. So that makes them good and ideal for sort of short bursts of speed and power, if you like. So the sprinting, we said long, we said slow twitch was good for long distance runners and endurance. The fast twitch muscle fibres are ideal for things like sprinting, short where you get short bursts of contraction. So whereas for slow we had last for a long time, we can put down here last a short time. So I've said that they're ideal for things like sprinting, but also they, they, you find fast twitch muscle fibres in muscles that you use for fast movement. So not just sort of the legs and the arms when you think about, say, a sprint, but also the eyes. Eye movement is very, very quick. So we actually have fast twitch fibres in the muscles that control eye movement. Now the energy in a fast twitch muscle fibre is released quickly. So that's something I think we should make a note of. So I'll just reduce the screen down a little bit just to give us a bit more room. And we'll write that down because that's really important. So the energy, unlike the slow twitch fibre, this energy is released quickly. And I'm going to write down here in blue... anaerobic and that's because to release this energy quickly we're going to do it through anaerobic respiration and we're actually using glycogen in fast, fast twitch muscle fibers now they also have stores of something called PCR so that energy can be generated very quickly when needed now PCR stands for phosphocreatine now I've said in a previous video about ATP and saying that we can make ATP by phosphorylating an ADP, adenosine diphosphate, adenophosphate, to form adenosine triphosphate. Now, when we think about energy for muscle contraction, we can get it through aerobic respiration, we can get it through anaerobic respiration, but we can also get it through something called the ATP phosphocreatine system. Now, phosphocreatine can actually donate a phosphate group to ADP to make ATP. And we can do that very, very quickly. PCR, so phosphocreatine, is stored inside cells 
and it generates ATP very quickly, but the PCR does run out after a few seconds. So this is a way of obtaining energy very quickly without oxygen for a short burst of energy for something like vigorous exercise. So that's why I've put there anaerobic, because we're not needing oxygen necessarily to release energy in these fast twitch muscle fibres. And if I were to draw a picture of a fast twitch muscle fibre, you would notice that there are fewer mitochondria. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to draw one, but I'm going to just make reference to the, the picture that I've drawn for the slow twitch muscle fibre. Fast twitch ones have fewer mitochondria, and there are fewer blood vessels. They actually don't have that much myoglobin either, so you can't really store that much oxygen in them. And actually that gives them that sort of a pale whitish colour when we look. So that fundamentally is the difference between a fast and a slow twitch muscle fibre. Slow ones contract slowly, making them ideal for um, muscle contraction that needs to last a long time, and we release the energy slowly. Fast twitch muscle fibres, however, are contracting very, very quickly. So they're useful for short bursts of energy for muscles that are requiring fast contractions and so last only a short time. And the energy is released much, much quicker in a fast twitch muscle fibre. It's usually released anaerobically because there are mechanisms that don't require oxygen for energy generation in these fast twitch muscle fibres. And in terms of structure, we have less mitochondria and less myoglobin than a slow twitch muscle fibre. Okay, hope all that helps.